um, here from another study. And actually, the other, other interesting I found uh, uh, other interesting thing I found doing this little bit of piece of research, when you do Chinese medicine, if you read traditional Chinese medical books, one of the things you always find authors copy from each other. Yeah? So you find one book and you find exactly the precise quotation in the next book. But what I found here, academics do that in their systematic reviews as well. They use the same quotation and you find it 1997, 2002, 2010. Uh, here's another uh, paper. Uh, again, Chinese medicine, uh, Dong Guai, uh, 1,000 years uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, female symptoms indicated for menopausal complaints. Yeah, okay? Um, and this is uh, one more paper, uh, 2010, and again, uh, Dong Pai products, native to China, same stuff, almost same, same, uh, same quotation, still used in TCM um, to treat menopausal complaints and menopausal symptoms. Um, same thing for Ren Shen. Uh, uh, ginseng. Ginseng is sometimes used as a simple herb in Chinese medicine, but when it's used as a simple herb, it's uh, for shock, to, to revive people. It's not used for menopausal, I mean, there's no historical claim that it's used for menopausal symptoms as, an, as a simple herb. But again here, uh, same paper, uh, Ernst 2010, just published uh, in, in Maturitas Journal, Widely used in traditional um, uh, medicine to treat sexual dysfunction and menopause symptoms. Yeah, okay? Uh, so this widely used is because in America it's available over the counter. In America it might be used to treat menopausal symptoms, but it's actually not used in traditional Chinese medicine. But there is a claim made that it is. Yeah? Uh, even more interesting is ginkgo. Yeah? Uh, this is ginkgo biloba. These are the leaves and these are the seeds. Yeah, okay. Um, as some of you, and this is a product, <laughs> yeah? okay. As some of you might know, uh, in Chinese medicine you use this. Uh, in Western botanical medicine you use this, but this you use, it, I think it's invented in Germany as far as I know, the use of the leaves for um, problems of blood circulation, the brain, etc. But here we have Edzard Ernst uh, saying, Ginkgo biloba, one of the oldest living trees in China. The leaves of this plant have been used in Chinese traditional medicine to treat circular disorders, enhance memory, and to promote general longevity. And that's why we might want to test them for menopause. As I said before, in traditional Chinese medicine, the leaves haven't been used, but the seeds. And the seeds are used for things like asthma or discharges. Yes? Okay. So one would ask, why, does, why do these researchers make these claims? Yeah? Obviously, there's a projection on their part onto Chinese medicine. So maybe the project, I, I can only speculate on these projections, yes? Maybe it's easier to get research grants, or maybe it's easier to get through ethics commissions, looking at one single substance rather than a complex substance, yes? Or maybe by showing that it doesn't work, but maybe by showing that a single herb that didn't have the original indication doesn't work, one can say that Chinese medicine doesn't work, yes? Okay, so there's but, but what I want to say here is, uh, as, as you see, that the potency in a substance has as much to do with certain desires or certain contexts in which uh, uh, claims to efficacy are being established than with the substance themselves. So let's look at some of the research that does actually take Chinese medicine um, as it is practiced in contemporary China at the moment. And the dominant way uh, to treat menopausal symptoms in contemporary Chinese medicine would be by treating the kidneys. And the kidneys is not the biomedical kidneys, but the Chinese medical concept of the kidneys. Um, this is from um, a website of the University of Maryland Medical Center, which is one of the largest uh, research institutions for complementary alternative medical research in China. Uh, has just recently been in the, in the press criticized for, its, for, the, for the fact that it does acupuncture research. And what you find here on their website, this is a website for patients, menopause, women, in, women who suffer from menopausal symptoms in Western medicine, in Chinese medicine, they have kidney yin deficiency. Yeah? Uh, this is uh, the Chinese state um, has developed um, uh, standards of treatment and diagnosis. This is from the Chinese medical standards for, of diagnosis and therapeutic effectiveness for um, menopause. 
uh, menopausal disorders, the two main groups are kidney yin and kidney yang deficiency. So basically a claim is also established here, uh, official claim supported by the Chinese state that when, people have when women have menopausal symptoms, they're either kidney yin deficient or they're kidney yang deficient. Yeah? Okay. And uh, this is from, and this of course finds its way into uh, <coughs> biomedical research in activities, to, uh, attempts to evaluate uh, the effectiveness of Chinese medicine, stripping away from it everything that might be the fetish. And here you have again. Uh, Western women, Western doctors define menopause as stemming from estrogen deficiency. In TCM, estrogen along with other problems is, is stored in the kidneys. So therefore, if you haven't got enough estrogen, it means also your kidneys are deficient. Yeah? Um, actually, so, so again a claim is made here whereby uh, uh, an attempt is made here to link Chinese medicine or the Chinese medical body to the biomedical body. Um, and but, 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 but what is claimed here is that this uh, idea that Chinese you know, medicine treated menopause thousands of years, that this idea that it uh, was related to kidney deficiency has been around for, for all that length of time. Actually, if one does a bit of research, it's very e I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure of this. Um, this, this claim comes from 1964, uh, from, from this text. Uh, it's, very, it's very clear to see because the first edition of this text was published in 1960. 1964 in the second edition, uh, menopause uh, is being discussed as a treatment. And I'm pretty sure, uh, I haven't got time to go into this here in detail, but I, but I, you know, I can't do a talk just on this, where I show this, uh, that the idea that, ch that uh, hormonal problems, uh, uh, that, that uh, menopausal problems uh, are kidney deficiency is a translation of the biomedical idea of hormone deficiency, of estrogen deficiency into Chinese medicine sold back to the consumers and the biomedical researchers as 2000 year old Chinese wisdom. Yeah? Okay. Because it's, it's, it's very difficult to find in the Chinese literature actually uh, very much about the treatment of menopausal problems at all. Yeah? Uh, as I will show, and, and that's a tendency that persists today. But once a truth has been constructed, this is what people tend to do. There's a very interesting study by uh, Zell from 2000 who looked at, uh, or she, looked at uh, the diagnosing and prescribing practices of TCM practitioners in America. And uh, they looked at uh, how they would diagnose uh, um, menopausal women, and uh, lo and behold, 81% diagnose exactly what the standards say they should find. Yes? Okay. Um, so there is, in other words, again, um, what is the fact here? Is the fact, where, where lies the fact? Where lies the fact, where therefore lies the potency of the treatments? Uh, because obviously it doesn't lie totally to my, uh, in, in my extent, in, in an observation of nature. And um, very interestingly, another way of approaching gynecological prob uh, menopausal problems in the Chinese medical traditions is through what I have called here the blood. Um, and I cited to you already this paper from uh, 1997 <coughs> uh, on dangue, on the use of dangue. And interesting, all these papers, they need to make some kind of connection all these scientific papers, for some reason, they always need to make a connection to traditional Chinese medicine, um, which, which in a certain way I find surprising. If I just want to, to, to look at a substance, why don't I just look at the substance? It doesn't matter whether the Chinese used it or the Africans used it or whether it gets used in, in modern China. Why do I need to link it? That's also a fetishization of, a certain, of, 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 of the object here. 